Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Baidu's exam prep. Welcome to your session on how to score 100%. How to have 100% accuracy in RC. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Nidhi, Priyanshi, Prasanna. All right. So till now, what we've been doing is we've been trying to uh, look at RCs, look at editorials and say, okay, we have to read and answer. And I've made you answer every question, right or wrong. I've told you, mark it, let me know what your answer is. But when you, when you're actually appearing in, that is as far as your preparation is concerned. You can't say tone question, mujhe nahi aata. I'm not going to do tone questions. When you're preparing, you prepare for every question that is there. Correct? Every question, easy, tough, even if it takes a long time. Para jumbles practice karo. In the exam, you may not may end up just doing the para jumbles in 15 seconds. But we practice, right? Uh, good afternoon, Soumya, Hirwa, Victor, Sonali, right? So, <clears throat> what is the key to getting 100% accuracy is Select the passages that you want to attempt quickly, but smartly. So, let, that doesn't mean you have to scroll. So, when time was not of a constraint, time was not a, it was not a speed test, then we tell the students, judge the paper first. A lot of people still do that. When they go through the section, in maths, you can do that. So, all the sitters, you answer first. Then you do the medium level difficulty. But English, mein kya hai na? you have one long passage and then you have a question, then another passage, another question. How much will you scroll down? Okay, so you have to read the passage at least for 30 seconds. When you, let's say you read the first passage. Okay, <clears throat> let me tell you, I am from an old school. Good morning, morning nahi, afternoon ho gaya hai, ma'am. I believe that no question, it, there is no passage and no question that should not be done. Only after you read the passage, let's say for three and a half minutes, you can answer two out of the four questions. So you have spent five minutes, seven minutes on a passage. It is time well worth it. I would, if you are good at RC, if you are good at English, if that is your strength, I would read the first passage even if it is tough. Quickly read it. Then look at the questions. Let's say first question, bahut long hai. False, except I am not able to get it. Leave the first question, go to the next. All right, at least two out of four questions you are done. That passage is done. You've attempted it. Bad mein time nahi hoga to go back for review. It has. I have never been able to go back to a passage, even if there is there are four minutes left. I still prefer to do a summary or a para jumble question. That is if RC is your strength, right? If you are an average student and you say, "Mere se." Max two and a half passages hoga. Two passages I can do brilliantly. After that, I can do the VA and isme hi I can get a lot of marks. Then you should select the passage to attempt quickly but smartly. What do I mean by that? Read the passage in less than in about 25 to 30 seconds. You see, the human nature, nothing is the substance of everything. Everything helps us to develop a consciousness which goes beyond the metaphysical. You read the first few sentences and you say, Nahi hoga. Then leave that till question 4, move to question 5. Alright, ma'am, sometimes passages look easy, but the questions are of another level. Victor, that's always the case. When the passage looks difficult, the questions are easy. When the passage is easy, but if the passage is easy, you have understood it 80%, then what's your problem? Victor, don't say that. There are quite a few students who like RC, who do well in RC. Just yesterday, I was talking to a student who said that, you know, I am getting, I'm able to do all four passages. I'm getting 75 to 80% accuracy in passages, but uh, not doing well in para jumbles. I said, what's the big deal? As long as you get everything correct in summaries also, you're set for a good score. There are a lot of people for whom it is the only reason you people are doing it, see, <clears throat> I am on the toppers batch telegram group, okay? Only if I give them a question to solve, do I get it answered. Why? 15 doubts in DILR, 100 doubts in maths. Iska koi easy approach hai. Why doesn't somebody do that for English? 
if you practice as much as you are practicing for quant there is no reason victor why you would say varc is not your strength try doing it now spend at least half the time that you spend for quant uh, for varc all right now the if the passage looks easy as victor said questions are difficult half your battle is won because you've understood the passage so next you are going to take time to eliminate options and there you just choose the questions to attempt smartly that means do not guess accuracy goes so it's like you it's like the monkey's tail i've got 15 correct 15 wrong kind of answer that doesn't work so what you do is let's say it's a main point question or let's say it's an inference question or a direct question you're good at it attempt these if suddenly there's a question which looks a little complicated and you feel is cancer b bhi ho sakta hai c bhi ho sakta hai i have taken a minute already to think about it then don't attempt it unless you say okay my gut feeling says b is okay but generally if i am confused between b and c as i am in xat mostly i leave that question and move to the next so at least two out of four questions are taken care of if the passage is easy to read at least three questions you can answer that way but do not guess <clears throat> and say yahi hoga don't be in a hurry when you answer see you can read faster than normal like for example you are in your last passage and 15 minutes are left so you are saying acha 7 minutes i'll finish the last passage 7 minutes i'll do for the rest you will all, be in all kinds of situations then read the passage faster spend 1 minute or 2 minutes only to read the passage see if there is any direct question on the passage see that and say okay i think the answer to this is in the second paragraph confirm once answer that question that you can do okay you can rush through reading the passage but you cannot rush through these two processes you know last time in the editorial i told you <clears throat> that which of the following if false will support the author statement what are you looking for which of the following if false contradict the author statement what kind of an option are you looking for the original option itself if it's false it will support the statement then the option should be something which is against what the author said but if it is false it contradicts the statement that means it has to be in line with what the author is saying once you have that it will help you eliminate options when in doubt in quant we know what the author actually that is always the case victor if i come out of an xat exam and you ask me the answer to this question some passage i won't tell you because you i'd say this guy will next say savitri ma'am boli thi b and unka c ho gaya galat hai whatever don't say that because you it's a subjective test but in that subjectivity there is a replication so with practice you can identify where this question pattern is emerging <clears throat> and i told you most of the time in summary what kind of wrong options are given all right uh zilani will do a will do a session on para summary but in para summary you need to have your summary in mind before you answer so the key to getting your accuracy correct in rc is this guys don't rush through your answers you've spent 5 some people spend 12 minutes reading the passage which is why 500 words 450 words why would you spend 12 minutes to read it keep your reading to 3 and a half to 4 minutes then only you can answer questions in 4 and a half to 5 minutes max so when you are eliminating options make sure you read the options properly <clears throat> all right for the first passage that i'm giving today zilani i think uh, when we do the summaries i'll talk to you but for summaries generally the uh, the intention is that it's an intelligent question setter and he knows that a student all the options should look alike so the the, the differences in the options would be very small you know what we call in 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 uh, hindi unnis bis ka fark but that one word changes the entire meaning or he would use a word which has not been used in the passage so how can it be a summary right so when you read a question for summary make sure you read the passage and you have the main points in your head properly you have your own summary then it's easier 
all right okay so now i'm going to show you i'm going to keep my timer on i'm going to show you each passage for the first one i'll explain to you <clears throat> okay i'll show you each of the options for 40 seconds please read it <coughs> if you've done it before also it doesn't matter read it again That is where you have to spend time. Stuck between two options, we'll figure out how to answer that. Here one, okay? Next slide. You have to read and understand what you have read. All right. Okay, next one. Next slide. Now, I chose this passage uh, knowing that many of you might have stalled it because the questions of this, the passage is easy. It's in straightforward language about currency use in uh, China during the Tang dynasty, right? And they've given it very easily, coins, textiles, grains. It's very nicely structured. One out of four passages, <clears throat> no, actually one out of eight passages, in fact, to those slots may if you are lucky enough to have it, you have to make sure you do well. In the particular year when this was given, students made mistakes in two questions. Why did they make them? And that cut down the accuracy for an easy passage. The passage was easy to read, right? No difficult words. Nothing was difficult. But he, there was a nice thread to the whole uh, argument he was building up. Which one can be inferred with use to the, uh, with regard to the use of currency during the Tang era? All right. Similar to the modern times, currency deteriorated easily, was not used for official work. Copper coins were more valuable and durable than textiles. Grains were the most used currency because of government requirements. All right. Now. Let's go with D. Okay, I've already got many answers, some of you. What is, do you remember what did he say about grain? 
grain was used by the government correct government officers were paid in grain and salaries were in grain something like that he had said so ye kyun correct nahi hai why is d not correct he did say that grain was used for official use official payment so what why was what is wrong with d anybody <clears throat> grains were not the most used currency so here what he did is they mix up a fact with an incorrect one a correct uh, an incorrect statement all right they were used in government government use may grain tha but they were not the most used currency okay what is wrong with c what is wrong with c copper coins were more valuable and durable than textiles what is wrong with c no no the value <clears throat> no listen if i want to make a payment okay you have to pay either 15 copper coins or its equivalent in a bolt of silk copper coins were more durable than uh, uh, textiles is correct but how can they be more valuable you have payment in different modes one currency is not more valuable than another 1000 coins 1 rupee coins was more expensive for the government to make so more expensive and more valuable is not the same thing the value of 10 copper coins if you are buying a house and they oh no no house is too much if you want to buy this pen i'll say you have to either pay me 5 copper coins or you have to pay me 5 meters of silk so currency mode is different you can pay me by in coins or you can pay me uh, with a note but doesn't mean coins are more valuable than the note right so this part is wrong <clears throat> durable yes because the silk became old cost of manufacturing ke bare mein to yahan nahi likha hai all right uh, what about b currency that deteriorated easily was not used for official work it was used Uh, grains rotted they were used okay so once you say yeah currency usage was similar to modern times because there were different kinds of currency used okay so now what does this teach us that when you're looking at the wrong options once you <clears throat> let's say a was not there a was in d's position or a you know is correct but whenever a is the correct answer i always have a doubt what about the rest so you need to quickly look at b c and d and eliminate it okay this was not correct this was not correct this was not correct and how is it not correct only partially correct one wrong statement is put there not fully correct all right so if even if a statement is half half of an incorrect statement is added that's wrong so when you are in a hurry you don't look at that and that is why you make a mistake which basically tells you read the option every word of the option carefully <clears throat> okay next one and that is the time you should not rush that if you rush through the rc 40 minutes 40 minutes mujhe i have to finish 24 questions you will or 26 questions 30 whatever you are saying you will not do well if you say that just sit and say 40 minutes i've got all the time in the world let me quickly try to do this in 10 minutes that's the right attitude okay All right. Modern currency system shares all the following features with Tang, except. Shall I show you the passage? If you've already read it, we don't have to. <clears throat> Modern currency system uses all of the following uh, features with that of Tang, except. Does it use different materials as currency? He has given examples. right here what examples has he given we also use coins notes and checks and credit cards tang used uh, grain uh, coins and textiles very good 
its currencies fluctuate over fluctuate in value over time yes it uses different currencies for different situations for small payments you prefer coins just like they did for government use you use something else just like they did now modern uh, currency is undergoing transformation we cannot uh, infer that about tang that is not a common feature many students got this answer or or left this answer because they were not sure now remember it said the last paragraph said our currency system is changing in front of our eyes the modern currency system is tran undergoing transformation tang dynasty nothing has been said about transformation so that is not something they have in common got it okay next steady and stable he uses the word textiles were steady and stable in what way were they steady and stable he has given it in the passage if you didn't know it you have to just go back to the part where he talked about textiles okay supply of textiles there was no problem they weighed less the the dimensions were steady the value was stable and you could use it for large transaction these are the four points supply was steady they weighed less than their equivalent <clears throat> dimensions remain the same steady and the value of different textiles also was stable rather than the fluctuating value of coins copper ka value change hoti coins ka value bhi change hua but that was not the case with textiles so when he uses steady and uh, supply he is talking about they didn't have a problem with supply dimensions and measurement so just remember always synonyms will be used okay quality also but he never talked about transportation he just said that transportation costs were involved okay but he didn't talk about unreliability therefore it's d okay so this was a passage where you could have got four on four what the fourth one now this is an application based question and again sadly when we did the analysis many students got it wrong application based question they spent a bolt of silk now let's quickly go back to the part of the passage where he tells you how the silk thing was used all right textiles ke bare mein in circulation uh, textiles also had advantages and disadvantages what were the disadvantages if they were in circulation for a long time they would show signs of wear and tear if you use the same cloth for exchange obviously it will show signs even notes that is the same right so stained faded and torn bolts of textiles had less value than a brand new bolt so you bought let's say you bought a bolt of silk as currency you kept using a bolt of silk the the normal dimension he has given you so many centimeters by so many centimeters a bolt let's take it as a meter of silk okay when it was new obviously it was worth more its value was more and an old piece of cloth old piece of silk would obviously cost less furthermore a full bolt had a particular value full entire 1 meter or 5 meters had a particular value if suppose you wanted something less something worth half of the value of the full bolt what would you do you had to cut it and if you did that cutting it to smaller pieces lessened the value of textiles so that is why unlike coins textiles could not be used for smaller transaction everything that you bought could not be exactly rounded off to a bolt right so sometimes it could be half or maybe a quarter then when you cut the piece from the standard dimensions that cut piece its value went down understood so now he is asking economically therefore economically what would be a sound decision for a small purchase worth 1/8 a bolt of cloth 1/8 a 
of a bolt of cloth, which is the best way to pay it. Take a piece, cut it to one eight. Right? Read, read. Now tell me. But aap ek piece ko leke one eighth cut kar rahe ho. So what will happen to the piece of silk or the, the cloth? It loses its value. And next time when you want something worth one bolt, you're not having one bolt. There also you will lose. If you cut, it's like we, I keep telling youngsters, gold, you lose either way. When you buy and when you sell also. So it doesn't make sense. Because when you are selling, let's say I bought this bangle from a jeweler. First, when I bought it, he is going to take making charges. He, even if they say minimum making charge, two, kuch to lega. Okay? Now, when I sell it, he will again cut. Wastage charges, making charges, he will again cut and only give me the value of the gold. So, both ways you are losing. A is not the answer. Because you are cutting a bolt of cloth and cutting a bolt of cloth means you are lessening its value. You are lowering its value. So A is not the answer, guys. <clears throat> I'll take you back to the passage. Tell me how is A the answer? For large transactions which are worth 1, 2, 3 bolts, use textile. If it is parts, quarters, then... The dimensions of a bolt of the value of text. No, no, not this. Sorry, sorry. Uh, here. Textile. One, it should show signs of wear and tear. Okay. A full bolt had a particular value. But if you cut textiles into smaller pieces to buy or sell something less than a full bolt, that lessens the value of textile. So how will it make? economic sense to buy something which is worth one eighth a bolt of cloth give the equivalent of that in some other currency where you don't have to cut it because the moment you cut that bolt it is losing its value the question is saying which which one would not be an economically sound decision means which one is not a practical decision Oh, okay. Okay, understood. I am sorry. I am sorry. Which one would not be an economically? I am sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> this is how I made a mistake. All right. I stand corrected. Okay. <clears throat> Volume. Or bhi jada karna hai. You want me? See, my voice itself is uh, under threat. Hmm? I'll try to speak louder. All right, let me not show you this. Let me just ask. Uh, um, one minute, let me send him a message to. Okay, <clears throat> I'm speaking a little softer than I normally do, but let me try to so In Meanwhile, I have asked him to increase the volume. All right, okay. Plastic pollution. I hope none of you have done this passage. I'm only going to show you the passage and take your answers for you. Let me put the timer on. Let me put the timer on. Next slide.
Next slide. Next slide. Oh, question. All right. Okay. Question one. First was very quick. Okay, let's go back to the first one. I will give you 30 seconds to read again, Victor. I have no problem. You provided you get your questions right. I'll give you 30 seconds for the first slide. Okay. All of you. 30 seconds for every slide I can give you. Still, you are reading it within four minutes. Next slide. Next slide. I'm showing it now for 30 seconds each. Any part you missed, you can read. After that, I'm not going to show it again. Okay? I mean, in the exam, you can always refer to the passage, provided you're not rereading the entire passage. It's okay. You have to keep remembering the time slot, not panic, and just concentrate fully when you answer. That's the key. And understand the answer options. More important than understanding. Entire passage you don't have to understand. All right. You only have to understand 20%. The problem is we don't know which 20%. So let's read the entire passage. Which of the following interventions would the author most strongly recommend or support? <clears throat> One, question 5. Recycling all plastic debris in the seabed, having all consumers change their plastic consumption habit, completely banning all single-use plastic bags, or passing regulations targeted at producers that generate plastic products. Is it C or D? Now, we know that he says he is not in favor of recycling. He says recycling se kuch nahi hoga. Recycling is like hitting a hammer into a wall of a falling skyscraper to prevent it from uh, falling. That is how ineffective recycling is. Then he says that consumption habit of, of consumer se kuch nahi hoga. We know that he has said A and B. He is against single-use plastic and he is against this. So which one would he favor? These, these are the two options that got the students. His target is producers. Now, single-use plastic bag production and use. But here, this would be everything because it, it is targeted at producers. That is the key. He is against plastic producers. Therefore, it is D. All right. Okay. Next question. Negative effects of the use of plastic. He has mentioned a lot of them. Which one has he not mentioned? If you remember the paragraph where he has mentioned the various negative effects, he said even the so-called biodegradable, whatever degradation you are talking about is very slow. Has he mentioned this or not? Then poisonous chemicals, animals, it also smells like their food. Not just that, lot of people, uh, actually the, a related article, if you read the article related to this, uh, from the original article, there is one which said how much percent people who, who eat fish 
actually how much in which parts of america it was parts of florida what percentage of microplastics were they actually consumed is article ke baad wo tha as a link so poisonous chem chemicals released in water should be there also he did talk about the digestive system some uh, some uh, take plastics itself which full plastics which interfere with the digestive system some with plastics which do that but has he talked about this no so easily it is be okay all right next one the very first paragraph he says i don't like being lied to right what is the lie he is referring to now i know you might have read the passage before but whenever they give a question based on a word or a phrase used refer to the passage always and read that part quickly the only thing worse than being lied to is not knowing that you are being lied it is true that plastic pollution is a huge problem and it is true that we should reduce our plastic footprint the lie is that blame for the plastic problem is wasteful consumers and that changing our individual habits will fix it what is the blame blaming consumers and telling that changing consumer behavior will fix plastic pollution you have the answer now look at the options that will always help you eliminate the close options seven should now be a cake walk yahan pe ek gap hona chahiye oh sorry 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 there should be a gap there i did it and i used the wrong ppt ha <clears throat> what is worse this is not the lie this is not the lie lie is the wrong person being blamed answer by mistake i showed it yeah but even otherwise you would have got it all right next one what hammering a nail is halt to fall okay what kind of figure of speech is this hammering a nail is to halting a falling skyscraper what's he doing here using an okay all right iift will iift of the examine is part of cat we would normally ask all right question 8 using the wrong approach right or an ineffective approach what is he referring to what is the ineffective approach or wrong approach the author is referring to with this analogy relying on emerging technologies to mitigate all ill effects of plastic pollution encouraging responsible production focusing on plastic behavior or focusing on single use plastic is it c or d let's go back to the passage you have to go back to the passage to know recycling plastic to saving the earth is hammering so he is using it in terms of recycling all right then he says this the actual problem is talking of recycling as fixing the problem of pollution the problem is that recycling will not fix it all right so what is he talking about which one focusing on consumer behavior recycling is only an example given all right recycling is only an example given single use plastic to reduce carbon footprint is an example given but the key here is focusing on consumer behavior consumer behavior you whole point is single use plastic production not so much the use so by putting the blame on us and saying 
recycled single use plastic cannot be recycled then it's wrong okay so this is an example but basically what is it consumer behavior is the wrong approach okay all right what does the author think about the keep america beautiful organization that is the purpose of having reading comprehension victor that you are you are supposed to read case studies yeah cases and they are not those tiny caselets that you get the one paragraph caselets you get in xat decision making they are a few pages long they are 100 pages long you are supposed to read read fast summarize the main points uh, uh, so we normally these are you will be taught all this mind mapping to remember the main points and that's how you get to it yeah it is a green wash but it's not a benevolent attempt so a is wrong many people re re saw green wash and thought ha green washing to hai passage mein so in a hurry you would mark this but it's basically a cover up a sham to divert attention from them to somebody else okay all right how many questions did you get right in passage 2 even if you if you've done it before you should have got 4 on 4 if you've not done it before also you can get 3 on 4 easy that's the thing all right so getting 100% accuracy is not difficult what did i say read quickly but thoroughly all right read the question understand what is the question asking you and then most important give yourself time to eliminate answer options don't do that in a hurry if you do that in a hurry your accuracy will go no matter how well you've read the passage all right okay enroll in our test series these are our toppers be very proud of them there were many more by the way we just have the top 5 here the others are just behind them by 0.1 percentile all right and uh, all india open mock 8 october last date hope you take it at this point in your preparation you should be taking all mocks all mocks open and unpaid mocks whatever you are taking take all mocks and analyze your attempts join us on social media channels so that you know what session is going on attend those short sessions uh, if you don't have time to prepare if you have other things these short sessions often help you okay they are like power naps they will help you with your preparation all right i'll see you again very soon in my next class which is on tuesday with an editorial analysis at 12 all right see you guys bye bye